Hey viewers, my name's Kara. I'm your Tuesday host on The Pagan Perspective, and this week we're talking about what our altars looked like then, when we started practicing, and what they look like now. So I'm going to give you a little tour of some sample ones, and I have a couple pictures of altars I've done in the past, but I don't really have a lot of what it looked like, so I'm just going to describe it. And also, I just moved into my grandma's house, so most of my stuff is still put away. I have not set up any of my altars, so I just put together some really quick example ones for now to show you. So let's do that. Okay, so when I first started practicing, my altars looked a lot like how pretty much every beginner's book told you to try and set them up. And I, you know what? I'm not going to say that that was a bad thing, because even though I don't do it exactly how the diagrams say now, I do keep a lot of the elements that I liked from that, and I think it was a great start because it told me what to do, what to try, and it enabled me to practice with it and see what I liked and what I didn't. So I always tried to give my altars a god half and a goddess half and anything that was the unity between them was put in the middle and I had all four elements and I had a god thing and a goddess thing and I had, you know, everything that is supposed to be there. I would always try to have. But when I first started practicing, I actually kept a very small altar box, and these are the things that I used. This is actually the first candle that I ever used, and I chose one that had a lid on it because I wanted to be able to take it around and use it, and I had a small box that I would pack everything in, and so I could take it around with me and bring it out in the woods and whatever I wanted. So this is the candle that I used first, and it's actually baby powder scented, and in Reverend Rose style, smell. It smells exactly like baby powder. It, like, it's really strong, actually. I didn't even need to put it that close to my nose. But that is what I used for my fire representation. And then these two candles, or these two, and they are still the same two. You can see that one's all the way burned down, but that one's not. I didn't use these very often. I would always just light them when I was doing ritual and put them out when I was done. So as you can see, these are still the exact same candles I have been using for all those years. But I would use these as my illuminator candles, which the books said you should have a god one and a goddess one, so even the scents correspond with god and goddess. The god one is energy for body, mind, and spirit, and see I even drew a little god symbol on it. And the goddess candle, I picked Jamaican vanilla for free spirits, and it has a goddess symbol. And then for earth and water, I had a sand art kit that came with these bottles that you were supposed to use for the sand art, but instead I filled this one with salt, and this one was always full of water, but it's evaporated now. And these are the two things that I would take out with me in my little box. I would have that or in a bag, that and those, and those would be my representations, and I would just kind of uncork it and pour out a little bit, or I would just leave it like that, and there's my representation. Now, I still do a slight, slightly similar thing. This is what I have for water now, and I don't leave it in the jar, but this is how I store my consecrated water. I have a big one. This was from a scented oil, and I just took off the label, and then this is a jar that my mom gave me shortly after, so I stopped to using that when I got this and I would pour it into a little bowl or something and then for air I would always have a little incense burner but none of my incense burners are out right now at the new house so I don't have any to show you but I would always just have an incense burner so those are the things that I used in my first altars ever now I'm gonna take you upstairs it's gonna get dark and light again because I used to keep an altar on my dresser top and it was the entire long dresser top I almost tripped on a stair just there this dresser used to be a full altar and I would have the god side and the goddess side and you know, the unity in the middle. This is just how it's set up right now as my dresser. I'm in the process of moving in. But this entire thing used to be an altar, and I can actually tell you what it looked like because I drew a diagram of it in my Book of Shadows. So this was in 2006. The altar has a god and a goddess side. I had a long incense burner along the back in the center, and my pendulum board was right in front of that in the center. I had an incense burner to either side of that, and my illuminator candles were above that. Oh, I had two oil burners, actually, as my god and goddess. The goddess one is a unicorn one that I have downstairs, and for the god one, I don't remember what I used, but I had the god and the goddess. And yes, they are the wrong side, if you can tell. I used the goddess on the right and the god on the left. I chose to do that because I am female and right-handed, so I put her on the right-hand side. Looks like I had a big candle here, and my mortar and pestle, and I had two more candles on the outside. Oh, you know what it was? I had my unicorn incense burner for goddess, and the two white candles for her. And then I had the god one and the two maroon candles with the 
leaf holders that I showed you downstairs on that side. Candle, 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 candle. So I had a lot of candles. So that's what this looked like. I had like the entire little setup for the god and the entire little setup for the goddess. This might have been what I used for my god representation. I'm not sure, but now I have Leo up here. So that's basically what my altars looked like then. Now I'm going to show you what they look like now. So actually while I'm right here, I'm going to show you a little, it's not really an altar. I don't know what you would call it. It's a, it's a focal point, basically an energy focal point for my relationship. And it is much less creepy than Helga's for Arnold. So this is on my bedside table. Back at the other house, it was on my bookshelf. This is my little conglomeration of stuff that reminds me of my relationship. That's a picture of us. And that is a stuffed animal that he got me and a little book that he got me called I Like You and a candle, of course, because it's romantic. And some rose quartz. This one, my mom gave me two chunks of rose quartz at the same time and I blessed them, consecrated them, charged them together to be like a pair specifically. And then I gave the other one to my boyfriend and we both keep them by our bedside. So that's the kind of thing I like to do now, just when there's one specific type of energy or thing that I want to keep in my life, I make a little area just for it. It's not really a working altar, it doesn't have all the stuff that I normally like, but it's just there to kind of pull that energy together for me. I really like that. And then here I just made some little sample things because if you watched in my old video I mentioned that I had four different elemental altars and right now the only two tables I have set up are the air and the fire. So I did a little sample of what an air altar for me might look like and I love fans first of all. I have a lot of fans and that one in the center is a gift from a friend of mine. She went to China and brought that back for me. So I always have that at least that red fan. This time I happened to have more of them so I just did more. A bell because sound is air. Yellow is the color that I associate with air, and this candle actually happens to have dragonflies on it, so it's even more so. I try to have feathers when I can. This is my little sachet bag of lavender, because lavender's element is air. And then my wand, because I associate wands with air. And then the altar cloth is blue. Normally it would be blue or white or yellow or something that's airy to me. So that's just, it's a very simple, oh, and normally I would have an incense burner, but like I said, they're all packed away. This is the only one I have out, and it's very big. Big. So it's next to the altar, but not on it because it would take up so much room. And then for a fire altar, this is the table that I always use. That's not the altar covering that I use. All my stuff is packed away, so I just used these. They're green, but I turned it over because the other side is red and that's closer to fire. This is not a setup that I've ever actually done for a fire altar. I'm just, it's an example. I always keep my actual like flame devices on my fire altar because that's a good place for them. So I have my incense matches and my lighters. Candles, candles, candles. I always use tons of candles and I use fire related colors. This is actually a candle that I've been using for general prayer but because it's red and because it's a candle I leave it on my fire altar because that's just the area where fire goes. I use candles on the other altars like that but generally it would be here. And then this is actually going to be something I use in the next thing I show you but that is my travel size fire representation because it's a red piece of glass. So let's take this over here to the next thing I'm going to show you. A couple years ago when I was watching YouTube, I watched and she was making a little travel size type thing. So I searched and searched for about a year and my mom finally found me these little bottles. And I actually filled them with element representations from my grandmother's house, which is where I live now. So this is soil and twigs and things from the tree stump, which was my grandfather's favorite tree, and he is no longer with us. So I got earth from his tree. These are feathers that I have found fallen on the ground over the years. This is water from my grandmother's bird bath, so it's rainwater. And then, of course, the red piece of glass that I found on the beach, I think. And then, because these two things don't fit within the bottle, I had to take the caps off. And I used the two caps here. They have a moonstone and a sunstone. So that would be the god and goddess representation, or for me now, where it used to be about god and goddess all the time, because that's what the books said. Now I kind of use anything that represents balance to me, the two sides that go together. So that is an example of the kind of simple, tiny thing I would use. And these bottles, you know, I can screw them tight, you know, nothing will, won't come out, so I can take it with me. I can put them in a little baggie, pull it out whenever I needed it. And also something like this, which I haven't used yet, because obviously the candles haven't been burnt. But this is something I was putting together because my mom and I have so many of these candles. I got this gift set and it came with this candle, so I just got a pink, a green, and a blue for the other three elements. 
And so that would be something where I just pull it out and set it up and that's all I need is four candles. And you know, honestly, more often than not, you guys hear me talk all the time about how I, I just go out in nature and I do things without anything. I just use what I find in nature and that's really what I do most of the time. The stuff I'm showing you is just the kind of stuff I have around the house that I like to have because that's where I have things. I guess the, pardon the mess behind me, I guess the last thing would be when I do like a Sabbath altar or an Esbet altar. My Esbet altars, if I do them, probably actually look like that. It's all like white and silver and blue. I just go with moon-like colors and mirrors and other things that are about the moon to me and moonstones and things like that. But mostly like for Sabbath celebrations, I just go with a lot of things that are symbolic of that season, you know? So like example, some things that I did on Litha, I went out to the beach, I used flowers that I picked along the way, I used the sand, I used the water, I used the sun, it was cool in that way. And then for Mabin, I used my fire altar because it was by the window so I could actually see the season outside in front of me and I just used a lot of fall elements and colors and things like that, and leaves especially, grapes, harvesty things. And of course now that I'm moving I found these. I had this little harvest blessings thing. I have two of them. They're pot holders. So you know I would even throw that on there. I would hang that by my altar or put it on my altar. But I do think the biggest thing that's changed from when I started doing altars to now is that one, I do have more of the things that I wanted to have. Like I always wanted to have that round table and my mom finally gave it to me. And I did always want to find the little bottles to use as my tiny elements. And I still do things symmetrically and I sort of put things where I think they should go. Like I line up the elements with the proper directions and things like that. And I still like to make it pretty. I like to make it look nice. But I do think there's a lot more freedom with it now as far as what I use. I've been very creative with what I use, especially if I'm like outdoors and I just want to pick up things from nature. But I don't know, I just I just think I've gotten a lot more free with the things that I use on my altars or as representations. And as I said, now I have four separate altars in my house, one for each element because I'm trying to connect more with each element more deeply than I did when I began practicing. So I guess the changes that have come forth are just from you know, practicing for years and, you know, well, I've already done that, so I want to further my connection with these things. So I've done that and I've done a lot more trying to go out in nature and make connections with representations in nature and then I bring that in with me if I want to come inside. Like on my water altar now, I have a bowl with bark from the willow tree by the lake at my old house. And like I had that little sachet of lavender on the air altar, I like to take all the herbs that I have and put them on the appropriate altars because not only does that just make more and more of that energy put in the same spot, which is really what I'm going for, but it's also helping me learn because I'll, I'll think about it and I'll be like, oh, what element does peppermint go with again? Oh, well, I keep it on my fire altar, so it's fire. So it's it's helping me learn as well. This video is longer than I wanted it to be, and I apologize. It's a fun topic, and um, as I said, yeah, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of where I started with my altars. I'm really not, even though I kind of strayed from it, and now I'm like, oh, you don't have to go with the book if you don't want to. You don't have to have a million candles and two incense holders and whatever the heck else I had on that altar, you know? Like, I am so adamant about the fact that you don't need all these things. Like, you really don't. All this stuff I just showed you you don't need it and I believe that but it helps us it helps our minds it really does but I do enjoy the journey that I've made with everything and I'm sure that you will too or that you do too if you've been practicing for a while so thank you very much for watching I will end this now I will see you uh, in the new year because this is actually our last video and the subs will be posting next week and then we're taking a couple weeks of break also if you were interested in auditioning to be a substitute I posted a video a couple videos ago on this channel saying that auditions are open and that's where you put your video response. So watch that video to find out what you need to do. Okay, thanks. Bye.